Hello, this is the Part-Time Economist, and today we are reviewing The Forgotten 500 by Gregory Freeman. Now, this was one of the most interesting books I've read in a while for two reasons. The first is because it has a very interesting plot. Essentially, the plot is that towards the end of World War II, the, the Nazis are very low on fuel for their tanks, for their aircraft, and they only have a few key refineries left. So they're trying to protect these at all costs, and the Allies are trying to destroy these at all costs. A lot of the bombing runs that the Allies make face heavy Nazi resistance. A lot of these bomber planes will get shot down, a lot of them will get injured, and the bomber crews will try to make it as close to home as they can. Now, unfortunately, a lot of times they're not able to make the flight all the way home, so they have to jump out with their parachutes over enemy territory. Now, as you can imagine, this has to be a terrifying thought. They don't know what they're going to expect when they hit the ground. Are they going to be surrounded by Nazis and taken to a prisoner of war camp? Will they be surviving in the wild without any food or water? But it's very interesting because a lot of the airmen that were shot down in Yugoslavia were actually surrounded by Serbians and welcomed as heroes. The Serbians gave them food, water, and even protection with armed guards. And throughout the course of the book, we learned that this isn't an isolated event. At one point, the Serbians have found up to 500 American, British, and other Allied airmen, and they've moved them to a central location. They're trying to get a hold of the British and American governments, telling them that they have these 500 airmen that need rescued. Now, for a lot of reasons, the American and British governments aren't really paying attention to the messages that the Serbians are trying to send. Maybe they think it's a sabotage by the Nazis, just trying to get them to do a rescue and then ambush them. But for a lot of different reasons, they don't actually want to go rescue these people. But there's a few key players that are at the right place at the right time that are actually able to overcome a lot of resistance and bring this rescue about. Now, the plot itself is very interesting, but I also think the book is very well structured. And what I mean by that is that it's a historical book, and it's not just a textbook. Instead of the author saying, this is how things went, you go through the lens of the actors that were there. So, when the author's talking about how a bomber pilot could be shot down and taken to refuge by the Serbian, he doesn't just tell you how it happens. He gives three to four first-hand accounts from different pilots from different bomber crews about their individualized experience, how they were shot down, how they were taken to safe safekeeping, and even such things as how they came to join the Air Force. Again, there's a lot of character development of all the characters involved. The man that was responsible for orchestrating this at the Office of Strategic Services, we learned that he himself was trapped in Yugoslavia earlier in the war. So he has a personal stake, a personal connection to helping these people escape from Yugoslavia because he sees the similarities between his situation and theirs. There is almost a full chapter developed, devoted to talking about how the OSS was created, what some of its roles were. Overall, the book does a really good job. It's very in-depth. You're never wondering why someone acted the way they did. There's an explanation for everything, and it does take a while to hold your attention because you're having to follow multiple leads, multiple characters, but the advantage of this style of writing is that you have multiple historical accounts and you see things from the individual's perspective. Nothing is left out because there's so much work that goes into character development. Even such things as one of the main character's wife, a lot of stuff is written about her so we understand how she influenced the rescue mission. And just to go off topic here, it's very interesting because there was a civil war in Yugoslavia and a lot of people very high up in the American and British governments did not want this rescue mission to happen. Whether they ignored the Serbians telling them that they were keeping Americans there, or whether they knew about it and just didn't want to do the rescue, there was a lot of political reasons that this rescue wasn't supposed to take place. 
In fact, given all the intelligence that the Allies had, the man that actually orchestrated the rescue didn't even learn about this through official channels. His wife was originally from Yugoslavia, and it just so happened that one of her friends was talking to her and mentioned about these Americans. Now, she wasn't a government worker, she didn't have any official capacity, but she asked her husband and said, hey, do you know anything about these trapped Americans, these trapped British? And he hadn't heard anything about it. But after doing his own research, he found that it was indeed true. So again, like I said, the character development is really important because it's a very complex story. And the author makes a clear point that even now, a lot of the things about this is not talked about. One, because it was a highly complex mission behind enemy lines, but two, because there were a lot of political ramifications of the rescue. It's a very interesting book. It, it is quite long, but if you get interested in it, if you have some free time, I read it in a day, so it's definitely one of the better books that I've read, and I would definitely recommend it if you're interested in anything World War II related or anything CIA spy type related. This has been the Part-Time Economist. I hope the video has been useful, and I will see you next time.